Hi, Reed. How are you? Hi, Leora. I'm very well. Happy to see you. Lovely. Happy to see you, too. You're in Georgia now, if I'm not mistaken. I'm in Savannah, Georgia, which is beautiful. beautiful and town. you're working with a beautiful cast, if I'm Astonishing not group of people. Ray Fines and Anya Taylor-Joy and Judith Light and Janet McTeer and John Leguizamo just uh, have had so much fun. Really great. Amazing. Lucky and day. Mark Milo is at the helm. Correct? Yes, he is. Such a good director mm -hmm. and such a nice guy. We just all laugh all day long. It's really fantastic. Oh, and now I don't know if you're allowed to say you've worked with him on a little show that not many people have heard of. You were in one episode, maybe. <laughs> of Succession? Yes. Yes, I'm in episode six of, of season four, it is, right? We'll come, season four coming up? Season three? Three? Four? I think it's... <laughs> oh, no. Time has become so it's... bizarre. I know, um, right? I anyway, you're in an episode coming up in a few Yeah, weeks. the new season is episode six. Yeah, yes. I had a great time on that too. Oh my God. <laughs> For a show about mean people, they couldn't have been nicer, every single one of them. Playing a very different vice president than one you've played before. Uh, well, we'll see. I mean, I thought here I am being a vice president, why can't I be president? But, um, <laughs> but I had a yeah. really great time. Oh, yeah. wonderful. So we're here to talk about Mass, another excellent project. You. Um, you have such a lived in performance in this film, I have to say. So what was it like working with Anne on it? Well, all four of all three of them, just it was yeah. all dreamy, you know. Um, Anne and I really sort of clicked instantly. And um, and then I went off after that to do an episode of Handmaid's Tale with her, which was a yes. very different thing, but but uh, still a load of fun. Um, you know, she's so full and so present, and it was just easy, as as was Martha and Jason, too. So it was just easy to sort of be at that table in that room with everybody. And we also laughed our heads off, which I know sounds wildly disrespectful given the topic, but it was actually we we figured out it was a really good release from the intense focus. Of being around that table. Mm -hmm. So I got ahead of myself. For those that don't know, tell them about Mass and a little about your character, Richard. Well, Mass, uh, you know, you always struggle with how much to tell, but right. it's about two couples that come together six years after um, a school shooting. And uh, our son shot their son. And they have asked, the other couple have asked to please meet with us for closure. And uh, this is the first time we have done that. Uh, I'm married to Ann Dowd. Our marriage has not survived, which makes complete sense. And so it's needless to say, incredibly fraught uh, for each of the four characters trying to deal with how do we do this? What do you want? My character is, is the most resistant to being there. I think he feels like since this has happened, my life has been under a microscope. I've my, it's been parsed and examined and talked about and I've been vilified. And so uh, this really isn't a good idea for me, but I'm coming because the lawyer said so and my ex-wife said so. So here we are. What do you want to know? I got to go. Yeah. So I'm curious what sort of discussions did you have with Fran about the character and about crafting your portrayal? Because it's a very well, difficult character. It is difficult because my character of the four of us doesn't ever get a break. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't, in a funny way, Leora, I find him the most tragic character in the, in the movie because he doesn't change. He doesn't take the opportunity that, that the situation presents to all of us to get in touch with his feelings. He's so determined to hang on to any little shred of what his life was like before this happened. So he's living even six years later in some kind of denial about it. And yet it's not working for him. He's heartbroken and guilty and full of shame. Could it have been his fault? You know, he just, he doesn't even know how to process it. So he walks out of there at the end with, with very little catharsis. So, in terms of talking with Fran, you know, it's funny, we didn't really talk about it. I think Fran wrote it for me. And I think he knew that I would get who Richard was. I think Richard's a wasp. I'm a wasp. I know a lot about 
you know, wasps not wanting to examine their feelings and, uh, you know, you, you, in a good way, you sort of pull, all your, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and move on and you don't dwell in it. And that's really his downfall ultimately. But, you know, it's like, can we move on please? And he can't. Mm -hmm. So I know you had a very short rehearsal period, but tell me about that. We had, we met for two and a half days in New York, about three weeks before we went to Idaho to film. Wow. And uh, it wasn't really long enough, but it was long enough for us to connect and bond and get to have a sense of who each other was. And, um, and while we were working in the three weeks before we went to film, where we were working on our own, we knew what the other people looked like and sounded like and sort of a sense of it. So it made it, it sort of percolated for three weeks. Um, it wasn't a proper rehearsal. Mm -hmm. There was just wasn't time, but we did what we call in the theater table work, where we sit at the table and we read the script and ask questions. And what if I said this? And what do you mean by that, Fran? And it was a real collaborative time, but it was also an incredible time to bond. And that's that's really what it was for. It was a joyous, joyous experience from that first day through to now. We have come to love each other so much. We had this remarkable experience together that none of us had ever had anything like it. And, wow. um, and I think we really treasure each other, you know, too, that we came together and made this thing and, uh, and it's so incredibly gratifying that people are responding to it the way they are. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that response. What sort of reactions have you received that really stayed with you? Um, people seem to be so affected and so moved and so um, unexpectedly um, su surprised by what it does to them. Um, so many people say, I've never seen anything like that. Um, and it's the best movie I've ever seen. That's, I've, several people have said this, I mean, that's an astonishing thing to say, that yeah. you know, these are people who are clearly cinephiles and to walk away and say they, you know, had this unique, powerful experience from just the four of us at a table. It's incredibly gratifying. What was your reaction when you saw it? I was, I don't always like to see myself on screen. Right. I, you know, you're like, wow, Reed, what happened to you? Jesus. <laughs> um, but it was very easy in watching it the first time to forget it was me. And I will say I have watched it so many times. Uh, I mean, sometimes I'll just dip in for five or 10 minutes um, just to watch it. The, the thing I find myself watching more than anything is the opening scene where they're getting ready for us all. Uh, there's something about that that I find, I don't know how Fran did it. It's so tense. It's so, it establishes the mood of the film in such a great way. Um, it was really smart of him to do that because it wouldn't work if you just started with us coming into the room. You just wouldn't have any context for it. Mm -hmm. What so was your response about... when you saw it? <laughs> I'm still shaken. I saw it a few hours ago. And oh, I, no, um... you just saw it? I just saw it. And oh, so my God. Oh, I, wow. Because I, I wanted it to be fresh in my mind, but I, I should have watched it yesterday. I should have let it. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah, be honest. Ouch. Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. I uh lots of tears. What can I yeah. tell you? But yeah. but it's a beautiful catharsis at the end. Yes, it's a, a gorgeous, incredibly life-affirming movie, honestly. Um, for a movie that's about such a dire, heartbreaking uh, situation, I find that Fran has found a way, and he did this on purpose. It's not a surprise. He said how could I have written the movie if it was just a downer? It's yeah. not, it's really, no. I think, uh, so beautiful at the end. And Martha and Jason are just gorgeous. And Annie, when she comes back, just gorgeous. Yeah. What did your family think about it? My wife and kids saw it. I think my kids were pretty shaken. They're, they're in their early twenties. Um, but Connie said when she, when she came out of seeing it, I didn't watch it with them. She said, I think that's exactly what would happen in that room. 
you know, I, I think, and I think that's right. I think Fran, I don't know how he did it, how he made that conversation seem so real, the way it yeah. ebbs and flows and subjects change and then they come back. And it just seems, I mean, it was, everything was written. We didn't improvise a thing, but it feels right. like, like that. And, uh, you know, that was two years worth of research. He knew, he had really figured out what happens in that room. Yeah. And then was saying that they spoke to a mother of, um, she lost her daughter in a school shooting. Just I mean, recently I, they did, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I can't imagine, imagine. no. And she, she liked the movie. She found it healing, I think, wow. didn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ann was saying, so yeah. Grateful, so grateful for that story being told. I think it's a story, look, not only just about school shootings, it's really about everybody has something they want to be forgiven for and, and, and or that they need to forgive. Yeah. And what we, how we carry that around with us. I hope nothing as dire as, as a school shooting, but you know, just how human beings uh, rely, have to rely on each other and connect and that the poison that happens to us when we don't do that. I know I've, I'm carrying some rage around about some stuff that's been done to me and I wish I could let it go. Maybe I need to watch the movie again. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so have you seen anything lately that you've been really moved or that you've loved lately? You know what I, know I just watched busy? on Apple TV? I watched Mr. Corman, the Joseph Gordon-Levitt show, which I thought was amazing. I think he is the real deal. And he wrote and produced and directed it. And uh, it's so quirky and so funny, and then really heartbreaking. I mean, there were, I, I literally found myself gasping a couple of times at um, stuff he was doing and he had the show do. I really recommend it. It didn't get picked up for a second season, which is very sad, but maybe yeah. it was just too good for TV. I don't know. But I, I watched all of that. Really. Mm. Speaking of Apple TV. Midnight. I have got Apple TV here in my hotel room in Savannah. Thank God, because I can, you know. And I watch Midnight Mass, which gets very good at the end. Yes. Really. Did you watch that? I did watch it, yes. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of different twists and turns, but it, it gets you thinking, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm loving uh, a certain daughter of yours in Dickinson. Oh, isn't she good? Yes. Oh, I think she's just so beautiful and just, she's just so great. She's just finished filming a new series called Shining Veil, vale, where she plays oh. Courtney Cox and Greg Kinnear's daughter in a series that's going to be on Stars sometime this year, I think, or probably oh. next year. So, yeah. And then I did a play this summer with our son. A two-hander, <gasps> just the two of us. Wow. Uh, and we've both been nominated for awards in the Berkshires. Oh, good Rough for you. Ah, oh, you must be so proud. I'm incredibly proud. He's just, it's called Chester Bailey, and he's so good in this play. And we were a critic's pick in the New York Times. And we're trying to get it into New York, too. Oh, that'd be amazing. Well, thank yeah. you so, so much for the art that you bring into the world. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank you oh, for this. Thank you. I'm so grateful to you for, for this conversation.